Meanwhile, across the western side of the United States, we have a state of emergency in California with an ongoing drought. The driest two and a half year period on record. Those records go back to 1895. 2013 was a record setting year because we barely saw any rainfall. Right now we have had this upper level ridge that has gone well up into Canada and storm tracks have been deflected from coming anywhere near the California coast here, keeping the area very dry and warm through the last several weeks and months as a matter of fact. Is it natural climate change or is it human induced climate change or a combination? Going back uh, a thousand years, there are mega droughts in the paleo record, droughts of 30 to 50 to 80 years. So the possibility is there that we could be going into a, a 30 to 50 to 80 year drought. We've had great droughts in the American West that have lasted decades and some even almost a century. We have impacts from anthropogenic climate change and greenhouse gas forcing, which is causing general drying of the subtropics. Um, but superimposed on that, we obviously have a lot of natural variability. The warming that we're going to be experiencing from the increased greenhouse gases is going to really amplify that climate variability. We did actually see a significant increase in variability over the last 150 years. And that coincides, obviously, with rising greenhouse gas concentrations. So as we head into that, then we think that the, the amplitude, the magnitude of these, these extremes in that climate variation uh, are, are going to hit us uh, harder and harder. From farms to cities, this winter of extremes has crippled California. Chief, it seems a little unusual in January to have a fire this intense. We understand the drought continues. We've got those winds to battle. I mean, that's part of our understanding of climate change is that the climate variability will become greater. Uh, the droughts more intense and the precipitation events more intense. It happened in minutes. Fire scorched land couldn't hold the rain, so mud poured down from the Glendora foothills below. Just a couple inches of rain and you can see the effect here when the ground, which is burned by the fire, can't hold all of this. And something you'll notice, the debris, it shows it's been scarred by wildfire. Bill Patsard is a climatologist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. He says what's known as the Pacific Decadal Oscillation has warmed waters in the upper Pacific. That has created a strong high pressure system pushing the jet stream north. We have these climatic oscillations that are termed things like the um, Pacific Decadal Oscillation and the North Atlantic Oscillation that can abruptly shift from one regime to the next. Um, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation is often characterized by either having a warm or a cold northern Pacific Ocean and is very strongly related to drought and precipitation in California. So ultimately, these dictate whether or not we have um, polar vortex, you know, shifting in the manner that it has. And, causing these dramatic conditions um, of, of snow and ice in the northeastern U.S. And they impact whether or not you have sustained periods of drought, let's say, in the southwestern U.S. for a period of a few decades. It essentially steers the jet stream, which delivers our rainfall and our snowpack, up into Canada, sometimes into Alaska. It's so persistent, meteorologists have nicknamed it the Triple R, ridiculously resilient ridge of high pressure. And we've got warm air again surging northwards between Alaska and Russia. That builds an area of high pressure in the upper atmosphere. And what that does for Canada and the United States is it allows cold air to surge southwards across parts of the Midwest. So drought in the West often goes with frigid winters in the upper Midwest southeast and the northeast. Often in the press we see statements like it's natural variability or it's climate change. There's no doubt that the climate is warming at this point. Therefore any event like this has some element of that warming climate in it. Because temperatures are warmer 
In any dry spell, moisture is baked out of soils and reservoirs more quickly. When it does rain, more rain comes in downpours and is lost as runoff instead of being absorbed in soil. Worldwide, spring snowpacks are melting sooner, running off faster, and no longer serving as water storage for dry months. Meanwhile, some scientists wonder if massive losses of Arctic sea ice due to warming may be causing changes in the very cycles responsible for weather variations. There's nothing that says this is a natural mode of oscillation that's going to stay just like it always has been. There certainly is some, some possibility that we're going to induce a shift in one of these oscillations to, from one regime to the next. Ten years ago, Dr. Jacob Sewell investigated what effects declining Arctic sea ice might have on global precipitation. We took an atmospheric model and we held everything the same in the model except we took away some of the ice on the Arctic Ocean to see in particular, in the absence of anything else, how that would influence climate. In the model, Arctic sea ice loss produced a circulation pattern strikingly similar to the ridiculously resilient ridge of this winter. Of course, having that there is moving very intense rainfall up into sort of western Canada, southeastern Alaska, and it's drying out the western U.S., which is what the simulation showed as well. So I think it looks very, very similar. There are absolutely other things happening in the climate system, so I don't know that we will ever be able to say exactly this was caused by this, because it's a very complicated system, but the fact that all of those pieces line up, I certainly don't think we can throw out melting of the ice, thinner ice in the Arctic, as one of the contributors to this very stable pattern and therefore this relatively strong drought. And so what we are actually seeing in the current weather and in the literature right now is the questioning, questioning with perhaps some observational evidence that we are starting to see changes in these oscillations, which would have, I think, incredibly important consequences for weather and climate um, on a much shorter time scale than if you imagine the sort of incrementally slow change in the climate.